it's really about driving this as a business. And so I like to say that the, the next wave of Latino entrepreneurs are in the blogosphere. One of my favorite questions, and it's for all of you guys, is really how did you become so active in social media? Um, and then what I think is very funny about that is how do you stay active on social media? Because people swear that I live on Twitter and do nothing, but you're always on Twitter, and that's not really true. So, so anyway, there's definitely a perception that all we do is tweet our lives away. Uh, so I might I'll let you get started, but how, how is it that you, that you live but don't live on Twitter? And how is social media active in your life? I didn't know social media existed <laughs> until I started Kishwani. I wanted to share my experience with the Latino community. And um, I don't know, I started networking with other bloggers and I saw Twitter. What is Twitter? What is Facebook? So I started doing it as well. And um, I've got all these people following me and it's, it's just, I'm obsessed with it. I'm always tweeting, always Facebooking. I have all my tabs open. I have Facebook, Twitter, and I'm doing everything at the same time. I have TweetDeck, and there I see what's going on, who's talking about me, who's not talking. I respond to them. I cook, I do this, I do the dishes. I do everything at the same time. And it's just a big family, which I am so connected with. Love it. Well, I actually got on social media because of my oldest. I wanted to keep tabs on him. <laughs> <laughs>
uh, that I never admit, would admit that she was Latina. So, <laughs> because I, you know, I, I had lived in other countries, I, I was always traveling, so I didn't like really feel like, oh, the Latina with the banderita, you know? Um, but then, when I moved to Massachusetts, one of my, um, my last stops before Baltimore, um, I, my daughter started getting um, discriminated uh, we were the only Latina family in that city, um, and it, you know it wasn't the kids, mind you. It was the the principals and the teachers um, that would treat her different because she was Latina, and that's kind of like my wake up call to the things that our people go through. You know, when you're like traveling and you're in, like with the cool people in advertising, which um, you know, you don't really think you're Latina, but then that woke me up, and I decided to um, to turn around my business and, and make it um, as a, a work with nonprofits that advocate for the Latino community. And I started also writing about uh, Latino issues online. And so I would start writing an article, and I would go on Twitter and start asking questions to people. You know, uh, what do you think about what they're doing with the, the, the soda tax? I don't know that's one of the issues, but <laughs> and everybody would come. I would get like a hundred responses to a question, and I got hooked. I was like, oh my god, I love this. <laughs> so since then, I've been, um, this is like 2008, there wasn't even a lot of Latinos that we knew. I mean, that was back then. Yeah, yeah. yeah so we know of each other from back then, but there weren't a lot of Latinos around, on Twitter especially, um, but, but little by little we started like coming out of the, you know, or the, under the stones, like, hey, I'm Latina too. Uh, I've been told since. That's, that's basically my story. Okay, okay, great. So maybe Twitter. Oh my, Twitter. Um, or social media. Oh, social, social media. media. For me, coming from the print world, sometimes I forget I'm a published author, uh, really. Um, most people don't know that I am because they know me from the Twitterverse, so they don't know that I have all this print um, background. For me, I was a little bit hesitant to get into social media, and actually a friend of mine who's here, one of my best friends, she told me to get into MySpace years ago. So I put up from all my books, and I was like, who is one woman to me there? Well, it turns out that um, I made really good connections back then, and I'm talking about 2000. 2006, people who to this day uh, I developed relationships with. Uh, I was working for the Palm Beach Post and I would uh, scout my interviewees on MySpace. And of course, some of them thought it was a scam, I was a journalist, and I was trying to get my, I was living on the other coast. It was a tool for me. Then Facebook came around, my sister invited me, I thought it was another waste of time, but I could keep in touch with my familia, I could let go, and you know, it was nice. Of course, people from school came all boy crazy, what they really want to know about, and some bad experiences. But uh, I learned that I could, if I open my Facebook to people that I collaborate with, my Facebook is no longer for my friends. I have made new friends, like-minded people. What I like about social media, that I'm a newborn um, person with this, is that it connects you to like-minded people that you are not going to meet next door. Like my real friends, I hardly ever see them. I mean, they didn't know what I was. But all my friends live in Twitter, but then we meet. And uh, sorry, Twitter, Facebook, and so Twitter, I, I remember my first tweet. I sent it out and I waited to see what happened. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> what is this? So I tweet and what? What is the return? On Facebook, people interact with it. Space all these years ago, 
She did her first tweet yesterday, Karen. Please stand up. She's a, she's, this is her first tweet. I know you know your life will never be the same. This is another persona, I promise you. <laughs> There, I also found that I could do more than just 
then, like I said, do, do more than just share tidbits. I now work for an organization called Moms Rising. I work with them full time. And I love working with them because I've always been the type of person who loves to give, to volunteer, to help others. So I work full time with them and I support families. And they're a grassroots organization that actually helps women in general, children, and helps them to grow. And on the side, I also do my business, which I love doing. My business, Stiletto Media, I work with bloggers. We just finished a, a great campaign with um, Toyota. And the campaign was with Toyota and the Food Bank of New York. Mm -hmm. And I was able to help them provide food for individuals who are affected by Katrina, and also hire other bloggers who can work with us on that campaign. And to me, that was so tremendous because we used our voice. Toyota believed that our voice was so important that they hired us to do that. And I think that's such an amazing, it's such an amazing experience to know that such a large brand wants to work with us. And we all have that capability. And it's just the fact that you need to get over the fear and be yourself. I think that's really what it is. Be yourself, whoever you are, whether you're a single woman, a married woman, whether you love shoes or shopping or you're very into education or advocacy, you be you. And that will help you to grow your brand and bring the companies to you and give you the opportunities that work for you. Because I think it's very important to get something that you're passionate about. If you're passionate, it will come through. And I think many times we try and fit our curvy bodies into a square box. It's not possible. You show those curves and you show every single aspect of you to the brand. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So based on that, we're going to uh, take that, we're going to build off of that post. Uh, post? <laughs> I have way too many posts in my head. <laughs> that I, that I started doing 
was that, was to create that awareness in people. You have a voice, and your voice is powerful. And you know what, you're an influencer, not just here online, but you're an influencer back in your community. So use it. Take this information, take it back to your, to your radio, and give it to people. You know? And I think, little by little, we've been able to, to build that um, in the online community. And I, I, I can tell you, um, I've seen the community grow over the years, and, and to me, it's, it's, I meet all of the, the growth that I see in people individually, but also the growth as a collective group. Uh, the other thing that, um, in terms of um, the, the professional development for myself that, that has happened to me in social media is that I discovered that it, it went beyond just connecting with the community. Because what happens too is when you, when we're talking amongst ourselves, it can become an echo chamber, mm -hmm. and we just talk about it. We all agree or we disagree or whatever it is that happens. But I discovered that you know something because I I have an ear of all of you, and because I, I hear your concerns and I have connections that are in positions of power, I can bring your voice to the people in power. And so I, I you know, I, I love that social media has allowed me to be a bridge between uh, the community and the people in the government, for example. I, I go to the White House um, several times a year. <laughs> yeah. um, and I, I think it's very important that they know what everyone's talking about, what their concerns are, the, the, um, I do my, my um, best to create those opportunities for them to come directly to the community, to talk about things with you directly. Because one thing is that I go there and I tell them, oh, this is what's going on. But another thing is that I bring them to you and have them talk directly and you expressing your concerns to them. Um, and I think um, we, we can all use that in different ways for whatever our purpose is. But that's the most powerful part of social media. I, I need to say still that Eliane, even if she also said all that, but she's one parandera. <laughs> after parties, and you feel like you're in a real party. That's really like my, my little daughter says, no, well, you're, that's a party. That looks pretty boring. And I'm tweeting at my computer, but you make them really. I bought this, please support her, I don't know her, I just met her. 
But when I had to sell all my gold jewelry to just support my kids, I thought, you know, this lady who went through a divorce as well, I want to support her, I want to interview her, and I'm going to showcase her story. Because for me, you can, you can do great articles, journalistic articles. I used to work as a journalist, but I think that what really connects you with people is telling your story. We shouldn't be embarrassed to tell that we're either undergoing a depression, going through a divorce, or something happened to you. You, you talk to other women, and I find what I most love is when I'm able to give women a voice through the platform. And uh, I have acquired writers who have tweeted to me and pitched me, Diana Belongia, I don't know where she is in here, but there she is. She, she first pitched me through Twitter. So this, this what I believe, Twitter or Facebook do is that they bring you closer to the person in charge. I try to be that person who's accessible and I will never say, oh, uh, my, my assistant is the one who manages my Twitter handle. No, you're going to talk to me. Okay, so I believe in being authentic on social media and on the platform. And whatever platform I manage ever, because I know your life is evolving, you never know where you're going to end up. What I really am adamant about is using the power of social media, of blogging, of online, simply to communicate and to amplify anybody's voice and to empower women. That is, that is my, my biggest mission in life. Fantastic. All right, so we're going to move into a topic that as you grow and you develop in terms of, in terms of social media, blogging, your online voice, life in general, um, part of the biggest um, most important component that I believe in is a personal brand, right? So one of, if, if a microblogging and blogging in general gives you anything, it gives you a persona online, it gives you a personal brand. Um, brand new newbie bloggers always ask me, how do I build my brand? It takes quite a while you know, to build that personal brand, but it really is like a nugget that you always continue to polish and polish and polish. So my, with the, with the names, coupon, mamacita, mamacita, coconera, that's a great personal brand. How have you worked on your personal brand, developed that personal brand, and how do you use it to your, to your you know, betterment in terms of an entrepreneur? I interact with my fans. I mean, the fans, that's the number one, the readers, the fans. You need to interact with them. Every time they post a comment on Facebook and Twitter, you need to reply to them. You just can't just let it go. I think that's one of my biggest, that's how I've been successful. Because I've been there for them. They email me and I am responding in a second. I am constantly on my email. I manage everything at the same time. And I'm looking and see what's happening. Who's talking to me? Who, who is the walking? And they, they want to know what to do. I am there for them. I tell them, do this, do that. And talk to this, to the cashier, tell them this. I, I'm there for them. 24 wow. 7. Because I have another business. I have a trucking business, which I manage as well at the same time. So I have to be online no matter what. So I'm here dispatching my trucks to Texas, to California, to all over the USA, but I'm also talking to the fans. And they are stuck on something, there I am telling them what to do, where to find that you want, what to do, go to public, hurry up. You know, everybody's gonna go there, so you better hurry up and get that ragu, or whatever it is you're looking for. <clears throat> so I think it's very important to be there for the fans, to interact with them, to talk to them by their name, 